pray. Father, omnipotent and eternal God, I give you praise. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you, O oh Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for visibility. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our loved ones. We thank you for your creation. We thank you for humanity. We thank you for everything that you have done and you are still doing for us in the name of Jesus. This day also, O oh Lord, we commit um, the session into your hands, O oh Lord, that you come and give us insight of your word give us understanding of your word and the application thereof give us your spirit power in order to stand firm in the faith of our lord jesus christ blessed holy spirit go ahead of us in the power and authority of our lord jesus christ making all things work for our good we thank you for an answered prayer in jesus name amen great people of god today also is a wonderful day Saturday is dedicated to strategies in spiritual warfare. Yes, strategies in spiritual warfare, knowing the traps and deceptions of the devil and our tools and weapons to fight them. Today is strategy number six. And the sub topic is get out of sin. Hallelujah. Get out of sin. The topic is very, very short. You can keep it. Amen. Get out of every known sin. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, you cannot engage in spiritual warfare whilst living in sin. We don't do it. It is so dangerous. So you must first come out of sin in order to enter into spiritual warfare. This knowing the traps and deception of the devil is the strategy the Lord Jesus has given unto us so that all the time we are being informed what the devil is doing. Amen. So we should call sin, sin. Let us call sin the way it is. Amen. Sin is bad. Sin is evil. Sin disgrace. Sin limit. Sin make a person weak. Sin make a person powerless. Amen. Sin makes horrible. Sin is bitter. Sin, sin is not kind. Sin is wicked. Sin is degrading. Sins take away our glory. Sin is evil and sin is bad. Praise the Lord. So let us address sin. What the Bible calls as sin, let us address it as such. Let us not polish it and to uh, present it as if it is not all that bad. No, the Bible says that sin is evil. Amen. Anyone who breaks the law of God practice lawlessness and lawlessness is a sin. Hallelujah. Okay. People wanted us to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ um, to, to pamper them around their sins. They want to come into the kingdom of God with their sins into the kingdom of God. We all came into the kingdom of God as sinners. But when we came into the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth cleanses us in his blood. He cleanses us in his blood, making us pure before his holy presence. And therefore, we came as sinners. But the moment you enter into his kingdom, he hot, he cleanses you. He cleanses your spirit, he cleanses your soul, he cleanses your body, he cleanses your mind. Therefore, every guilty conscience that you used to have, you had before coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, he makes all those sins vanish from your mind so that you can live at peace in, the king, in his kingdom. Amen. So, sin, let us not adore sin in the church of Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of Jesus Christ, let us not entertain sin, for it is not good. Hallelujah. Let us read Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. Genesis 2, 16 to 17. It says, verse 15, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work to work it and take care of it. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, 
you are free to eat from from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for when you eat from it you will certainly die praise the lord this is the word of god god created everything and put adam in a garden a well decorated garden where everything is provided adam and eve was lacking nothing god gave them the freedom to eat whatever fruit or whatever fruit is in the garden he gave them freedom to eat it except one particular tree in fact god did not leave adam and eve uninformed about anything in the garden even including the tree of the knowledge of good and evil god informed them that this tree they must not eat from from it why because god because they are not matured enough to understand that this tree this tree possesses the knowledge of good and evil and when they taste the knowledge of good and evil they will be the sin sin will tend to what to to overcome them amen so it wasn't the proper time for god to allow them to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it wasn't the proper time so god also made it known to them that they shouldn't eat from it amen for the very day they eat from it they will die so in the innocence of adam and eve everything was very good adam was living at peace with the wife with uh, his wife and with god they were all at peace with one another until the tempter came until the devil came hallelujah until the devil came and then um, tricked eve until the devil came and tricked eve about what god have said and what god have not said amen uh -huh. so god almighty gave adam a command this command or instruction is a moral law amen that guides proper growth in the garden of paradise so at that time that god gave them this instruction this commandment this command not to eat it is that law that will guide them to grow in the garden of eden we also god has given us laws and rules and precepts in the kingdom of christ that when we follow those laws we will grow we will mature to have the knowledge of our lord jesus christ amen okay so they received this instruction from god and all of a sudden someone wiser intelligent uh, intelligible uh, more than adam and eve came to deceive them hallelujah okay god also warned adam the consequence of eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil the consequence is death hallelujah so sin is an action so let us now look at the definitions of sin sin is an action of the human will against the the divine will now god has created humanity adam our forefather the first man on earth god has created him with a will anytime god wants to do anything on the earth or in the garden he calls adam and then talk with him or give this adam the command the instruction the authority to do everything in his name including the naming of the animal so instead of god to name the animals because he have the wisdom and the knowledge he gave adam that mandate to name all the animals and everything that is in the garden hallelujah so sin is an action of the human will against the divine will doing the opposite of what god want god doesn't want adam and eve to eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil god doesn't want that and therefore adam and eve willfully disobey god therefore a willful action against the commandment of god or instruction of god is sin amen okay therefore adam opposed god's will god's instruction and became enemy to god mostly we used to say that uh, god is an enemy to us god is not an enemy to us we are enemy to him amen when adam and eve sinned 
The Bible says that they went into hiding when God came calling unto them. They hid themselves. They sinned. But yes, sir, God came to them. Amen? Uh -huh. So it is we that have, have become enemy to God. We became enemy to God when we disobey his word. We continue to run away from his presence. Amen? Uh -huh. So we are the enemy. For the Bible also says that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Whilst we were yet sinners. So we sin against God, but yes, the God came in the flesh to die for humanity. So God is always after us. He is not our enemy, but we tend to be enemy to him because we are hiding from him. We are going out from his presence. Hallelujah. So God is always after us because he loved us so much. Amen. But he also don't want us to live in ignorance. That is why he continues to teach us his word, especially things that would deprive us of our glorious nature. Amen. So sin is also the disobedience of the known word of God. Amen. Anyone you any person you see uh, committing some kind of crime or some kind of practices is it's, it's as a result that they have broken some divine law. Amen. So sin is the disobedience of the known word of God. Any word of God that you know and you do not obey it is a sin. Hallelujah. Okay. And when we sin against God, and when we violate God's law, it deprives us of some benefits. Amen? God provided everything for our, for our well-being. But any time we break his law, his precept of growth, any time we break such law, we, it deprives us of what? Some benefits. Amen? Because God's instructions, God's law are there to what? To guide proper growth in his kingdom. And now you are breaking those principles. How can you grow properly in his kingdom? So when we sin, we deprive ourselves of some benefit, some glory, some goodness in the kingdom of God. Amen. The verse 17. The verse 17. Amen. The verse 17. John uh, sorry, Genesis uh, 2, 16, verse 17. It says that, the 17 says that, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. This is God's informing Adam and Eve. The consequence of disobeying his word is that they will die. Amen? The consequence is that they will die. What does that mean? Because when they disobey God, they still live. They still live for ages. Amen? So what does that mean they will die? Okay, let us bring that into our human um, understanding. What makes you and what makes me alive? Amen? How do I know that I am living? I know that I am living because of my five senses. I know that I am living because I can see sight i can smell i can hear i can taste i can touch these five senses makes me know that i am alive how do i know that somebody is dead the person cannot see the person cannot hear the person cannot smell the person cannot taste the person cannot touch so that person is dead so when god told adam and eve that disobedient to his law is that they will die it means Adam and Eve will lose, will lose their spiritual senses because they were spiritual man in the Garden of Eden. The garden that God created was a special garden. It's a, it's a, it's a special garden. It's, it's like paradise. It's like heaven on earth. Very special. The atmosphere, the air, everything there is special. Amen. Okay. So, and in that garden, they possesses the glorious body. When Jesus Christ resurrected, he had glorious body. And Adam had a glorious body when he was in paradise, when he was in the garden of Eden. They had this glorious body. They possesses uh, uh, spiritual senses. 
Amen. Sight. Sight to see God. Eye to see God. To see angels. Amen. Uh, hearing to hear God speak and angels speak. Amen. So Adam have all these qualities. So when God pronounced that the day they eat from that tree, they will die. They died to the spiritual realm. Adam could not hear God again. Adam could not see God and the holy angels again. Adam could not smell God again. He could not smell from the garden again. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So Adam lost his spirituality. He lost his spiritual senses. Adam lost sight to God and angels. Adam could not smell the fragrance of heaven again. Amen. Adam could not hear the voice of God and could not hear the angel singing the glory of God again. Adam could not taste the goodness of paradise again. Adam could not touch the fruit of the eternal life. Look at it. In the garden, there is a fruit of eternal life. Why didn't they go and take the fruit of eternal life rather than to take the fruit of good, the knowledge of good and evil? See, all these things God has made. God is so kind. God is so lovely. He has given us everything that we needed for our well-being and for our maturity. But yet still, we are searching for a different things. Amen. So, Adam's soul was disconnected from his creator when he disobeyed the law that sustains him. Amen. Because actually, God created death as death. So, it wasn't dangerous. Death was dead because when God created everything, he said everything is perfect. Everything is good, including the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is good. Amen. When you don't touch it, it remains good. Amen. Okay. So, Adam and Eve fall from a higher dimension of spiritual being into a lower realm of degraded moral standard. That is a Romans chapter 3, verse 23 going. It says that for, for we all have fallen short, amen, of God's glorious standard because of sin. So Adam degraded, he has fallen from a higher moral standard into a lower realm of what? Degraded moral standard. This is the reason why we are suffering today. This is the reason why we are still fighting to come out of sin. We are still fighting to be self-control in everything so that we will not fall short of the glory of God. We will not fall short of the glory of God. Amen. So in everything, my brothers and sisters, remember in the kingdom of God, sin is bad. Maybe outside Christianity, outside the kingdom of God, sin is okay for some people. But we have come to the knowledge of God that sin is bad. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, call sin as it is. Sin is evil. Sin is degrading. Sin is wicked. Sin is horrible. Sin is disgracing. Amen? Sin is depriving. Sin makes a person powerless. Amen? So let us call sin a sin. Let us not adore it. Let us not pity the people who are committing sin. Oh, for you, I pity you. You are still living your sin. No. Sin is evil. Sin will kill you. Sin will destroy you. Sin will deprive you of your glory. Sin will make you go to hell. Let us tell the people the truth about the nature of God. Does it mean we are perfect? We are not perfect. It is by grace that he has saved us from our former sins and he has won us a garment of holiness and righteousness. And by the grace, which is the Holy Spirit power, we are still maintaining to have um, the glorious um, righteousness and holiness of Christ on our lives. And therefore, it applies to every Christian, every born again believer, every citizen in the kingdom of God must continually to put on the righteousness and the holiness, holiness garment of Christ so that they don't go and tarnish it. Do not go and spoil it by going back to your former sins. Hallelujah. Okay, Genesis 3, verse, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Um, from verse 1, 6, and 7. Verse 3. Genesis 3, 6, and 7. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree, it was good for, it was good for food and pleasing to the eye. Pleasing to the eye. And also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave 
to her husband who was with her and he ate it also. Amen. All right. Please listen. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree, the fruit of the tree was good for food. All this why they noticed the tree all right, but when the devil came to inspire the woman that this tree, God said you will die, but you will not die. You will be like God. Amen? That is the attraction of the eye. She saw the, the tree again, and she saw the fruit again. My brothers and sisters, this is where precaution have to be taken. For instance, yeah, when you watch, uh, let's say, um, pornographic materials, you don't know, and all of a sudden, your eyes watch that thing. Immediately, what you have to do is take your eyes off those things. Amen? Don't zoom it again. But this time, add, uh, if watch the fruit, and she saw that it was pleasing for food. It was pleasing for food. Amen? It was pleasing to the eye. So the desire of the eye to watch again, my brothers and sisters, in the strategies in the kingdom of God, you have to tame the eye. If you can tame the tongue, then you should also control your eyes. What your what your eyes your eyes should watch and what your eyes shouldn't watch. On Facebook or on social medias, a lot of videos and photos are going through the social media. You know, but not all of them are healthy for our spiritual well-being. That is why when someone puts some uh, some enticing things to you, be careful not to watch it. You don't know. You open it while you see that this is evil, immediately delete it. This will save you from corrupting your eyes and your mind because anything the eye sees is sent to the mind. The eye is the gateway to your soul. It will corrupt your soul. That is why my brothers and sisters, be vigilant in this in this area when someone should send you something through social media which you know as a believer that that is not good please do not watch it again rather delete it immediately because when Eve saw that it was good for food and pleasing to the eye and desirable so the more the eye sees it the more she desire it she desire it so when you watch pornographic things the more your eye sees it the more the body is telling you that i desire it fulfill this desire i desire it i want to have it you understand so avoid watching those things over and over again take your eye off it and then you will lose that desire of getting it amen desire for gaining wisdom she took it and ate it hallelujah so do not go and touch things that are not touchable. Amen? Uh -huh. Avoid yourself from contaminating your body spiritually and physically. Hallelujah. One, Satan claimed that the forbidden fruit would open their eyes. Satan claimed it would open their eyes. Make them like God. Meaning, the fruit, when they eat from that fruit, the fruit will impart the ability to know good and evil. Amen? But for God, it wasn't the right time for them to have this kind of knowledge. Amen? But Satan, because Satan hates human beings. The Bible says that God created the angels uh, with wings and with fire. But when God created humanity, when he formed humanity, God breathed his image, his spirit into man. God did not breathe his spirit into angels. He created them wings and fire. A spirit. He created them. But for humanity, God breathed himself. His own breath. He breathed it into us. And therefore, we are great in the sight of God. And wherever we are, angels of God desire to be with us. Because we carry the presence of God. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. That is one of the reasons why... Uh, Satan hates humanity and he wants to drive away man from God. Satan desires to drive man away from God. Satan will make you doubt the word of God. And so in order to drive you from God, he will, hurt. He will make you doubt the word of God, which says, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not hurt, um, um, uh, covet. Amen? Don't lie. 
false witnessing. You haven't seen it, so you have seen it. Those things, don't do them because when you do them, Satan is driving you away from the presence of God. Hallelujah. So, Satan's strategy is that he presents the bait and hides the hook. Let's look at this. If you are going to fish, traditional fishing, you use a hook and then you hide the hook with a worm because fish loves hot worm. So when the fish see the worm like that, it comes to swallow the worm. But hidden in the worm is a hook. So Satan always hides the hook in the scene. Hallelujah. So now Satan presented to Adam and Eve the knowledge of good and evil who which make them like God. This is the bait. This is what they desire. You understand? But inside that disobedience is a hook of falling from a higher dimension to a lower degraded depriving dimension as human being. So we also, Satan is always trapping us, deceiving us with bait. For instance, stealing. You have the opportunity at work. You see some material things. You want to take it. Oh, this is something small. It's not a problem. You can take it. It's not a problem. That is the hook. That is the bait. He's deceiving you with that material. But the moment you take something which does not belong to you, it is called stealing. You didn't ask before you take it. You took it. Amen. And therefore, let us avoid such things. Amen. Satan presents sin as enjoyable especially sexual sin sexual sin satan presented it as what enjoyable satan presented it as what having fun having fun and it is satisfying and it is profitable unto your body amen uh -huh. so satan make all this sin as fun amen and inside this fun there is a hook for instance a lot of people have contracted, married people have contracted HIV because they went behind their husband, because they went behind their what? Their, their wives. And those, those is, uh, sickness and illness are the hook of sin. It grabs them and it kills them. It destroys their lives. Praise the Lord. You arm yourself to go and steal. Amen. And when you went there, they shot you to death. You see, Satan hides all those material things and just to kill you. Amen? So, why is the miseries? There are miserable things and pains and disappointment and emptiness that accompany sin's pleasure. Amen? Uh -huh. any sins, anything that is applausable, it is palatable, it is good for the flesh, there is what? A pain disappointment vanity guiltiness in those things that you do and you commit them as sins there's those mysteries there's no so, uh, pain in them so my brothers and sisters this morning we are learning the strategies in spiritual warfare if you want to do a spiritual warfare and be successful in your prayer life and to decree and declare that it shall stand then do not stay in the known sins get out of sin especially known sin not something that you don't know about something that you don't know about we don't talk about it because you don't know about it but the known one my brothers and sisters let us come out of them in jesus mighty name amen okay the devil presents sin to you as an error huh some people when they see when they see so this is a mistake it's an error but let us address sin as sin it is evil it is bad amen they say it is okay to sin it is okay to sin because the whole world is practicing some kind of practices that the bible says that it is evil god says it's abomination but because the whole world have accepted it you you as a believer you are also practicing it because everyone is practicing it if you are like that please change your mind change your mind Amen. They say sin, there is no harm in sin. It's always enjoyment. My brothers and sisters, when sin sins hook took you, you 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 will suffer. So in not in order not to suffer, please come out of sin. Hallelujah. Come out of sin. Amen. 
Hebrew chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. Hebrew 3. It says that, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the, li from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Amen? Sinfulness, unbelieving heart. I am preaching about sin. Amen? Someone will be somewhere and say, I leave these people. They don't know what you are doing. They are doing. Amen? Uh -huh. That is unbelieving heart of the word of God. In fact, I have been in that situation before. When I was in the world, People who preach the gospel to me, I will tell them, you are colo, uh -huh. we are enjoying life and you are trying to do what? You understand? This is hardening and doubting the word of God and hardening heart concerning the word of God. If you are like that, please, you better change your mind because there's no time. There's no time at all. You see, there are wars going on in the world. When a bomb drops somewhere, you don't know when you, that bomb will carry you away. Amen? We don't wish that. But if the unfortunate happened that someone will die, does that person die in Christ? Does that person deny, crucify the desires of the flesh? So we have to ask all these questions. Amen? Uh -huh. So when you are hearing this word of God, do not harden your heart because it is about sin. Don't harden your heart because it comes to correct you. You better listen and listen again and then ask God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ to uplift you and to strengthen you and to empower you to stay upright. Amen. The same Hebrew 11 verse 25. Hebrew 11 verse 25. It says that, verse 24, it says, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's. Pharaoh's daughter, he chose to be ill-treated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. Look at something. Somebody who has power, who is prince in Egypt. Now, he chose to be degraded. He chose to be ill-treated as God people rather than to have a short enjoyment of sin. That is the word. Fleeting pleasures of sin. A short term of enjoyment of sin. You understand? So, you must flee sin's pleasure. It is a short time pleasure that will lead you to death. So, you must flee sin. If we, even if you have to be ill-treated and people will call you Kolo, let them call you Kolo or whatever name they wish to. But for you as a citizen in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, you must flee sin. Praise the Lord. All right, so we can see that sin is evil. Sin promises happiness, but render emptiness. It makes a person feel guilty and ashamed of evil they have committed. Listen, most, maybe 90% of people have been victims. You as a young man, you go and promise one lady that you marry her before you realize you have slept with her, you have disvergined her, amen? And after some time, you drop her. Look at it. The promise is there. The promise was not fulfilled. And therefore, the, the relationship will be broken. There's going to be bitterness, unforgiveness, broken heart. Look at what she promise. Enjoyment. Sexual enjoyment before marriage. Before you realize that person has run away. He has disappointed you. You feel beat, beaten. You feel cheated. You understand? So all these things presented, the devil presented as what? As enjoyable. But before you realize, you become so bitter, unforgiving, broken hearted that you cannot even love the right person again when the time comes. So my brothers and sisters, let us avoid uh, pleasure sins. Because it will make you, it will disgrace you, it will disappoint you, it will cause her emptiness in you, and you cannot even trust some, anyone again. Amen. Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Matthew 4, verse 8 and 9.
Amen. Again, the devil took Jesus to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Hallelujah. You see, the devil's strategy is always the same. He presented to Adam and Eve the apple of or the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil and took their garden. Now, God Almighty became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ as a, sin, uh, as a lamb of sin sacrifice to atone for the sins of humanity and to save them. You understand? And now, the devil now, God Almighty became flesh and now the devil came to God Almighty in the flesh saying that he will give him the kingdom of this world and the splendor thereof. Therefore, God Almighty in the flesh will worship him. You see, it's the same thing. He will present the bait, the pleasure of life, the beauty of life, the power of this world. He will present it to you to get you. Because when you worship him, you are becoming his slave. Because whoever you obey become your master. If you obey God, God is your master. If you obey Jesus Christ, Jesus is your master. If you obey the devil, the devil become your master. If you obey sexual sin, sexual sin become your master. You are a slave to those things. You are a slave to addictions. Amen? If you are drug addict, you are drug addict, alcoholism that you cannot stop. Yeah? You are a slave to that thing. That is why the Bible says that you are a child of God. You are no more a slave to sin. So you must come out of those sins, my brothers and sisters. Amen. So Satan presented the kingdom of this world and the splendor thereof to Jesus so that God Almighty in the flesh will worship him. And he, Satan, will now become God Almighty in the place of Jesus Christ. You understand? So he's always looking for the, for the point or a strategic point where he can cheat people of their power. Now, Adam gave dominion and authority to Satan. That is why we are suffering today. Amen? Aha. But thank be to God Almighty in the flesh that even in the flesh, he had self-control. Hallelujah. He had self-control and know who he is. This morning, you must know who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a child of God. You are no more a Gentile. You are a child of God. You have the word of God. You have the law of God. And therefore, when you obey them, you are a child of God. And you are no more, no more longer, longer a slave to sin. Amen. Okay. My brothers and sisters, sin enslaves, sin damages, sin disgrace, sin make a person powerless. Amen. Therefore, please come out of sin. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, verse 3. And then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. Ephesians 2, verse 3. It says, all of us who live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts, like the rest we were by nature deserving wrath. All of us, me, every one of us, we were by nature, we were, we were also what? gratifying the craving of the flesh when we were in the world before we came jesus christ we were chasing after all these things all these material things the love of this world the pleasure of women the pleasure of uh, uh, alcohol or uh, weed of or all kind of entertainment we were hot craving after them we were desiring them because the body was demanding them we were all like apostle Paul. we were all part of them but now that we came to the Lord, we must change our mind concerning those things. Amen. Because when we live like that, the wrath of God was on us. Just like the Gentile who do not have the law of God that will guide them for proper growth, we were like them because we don't have the law. But now that we are in Christ, let us make sure that we obey God's word so that that word will make us grow into the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you live in the kingdom of God and you continue to live in your known sins, 
then you still have the wrath of God on your life. Because first of all, there is no proper repentance. How will you know that you have repented of your sin? Because before forgiveness of sin comes, you must first regret your sins, which is what? Uh, repentance. Regret it, you think you will make yourself as if uh, you wish that this thing didn't happen. You understand? Uh -huh. So when you will regret like that, you don't go back to do the same sin. So my brothers and sisters, if you are if you are a Christian, you think you have been forgiven, you have been saved, and you are still living in the known sins, then I'm telling you the gospel fact. There wasn't any proper and sincere uh, repentance of heart and mind. That is the truth. So make amendment now. Take opportunity of grace. Now grace is abundance. Take the opportunity of grace and transform again. Change your mind again towards all the sins you know that are seen. Hallelujah. And then chapter seven, chapter four, verse seventeen. Chapter four, verse seventeen. I read. It says that Ephesians four seventeen. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. Gentiles are people who do not have the law of God to guide them into righteousness and into holiness. You don't have the you don't have this law. So please listen. In the futility of their thinking, if you don't have a law to guide you, everything you think is what? It's futile. It means vanity, emptiness. You understand? You think all your thinking is uh, having fun and drinking and addictions and all this and all this and are vanity upon vanity and their emptiness of life don't live like those who do not have law to guide them for proper growth in the kingdom of god don't live like that my brothers and sisters verse 18 they are darkening in their understanding they lack the knowledge of god they lack the knowledge of god darken is to have uh, to be ignorance of the law of God. Amen. So they are darkened in their understanding. They understand nothing that humanizing, stealing, arm robbing, coveting, jealousy, by biting, insult, abuse, all these things are hard. Vanity life. But they don't get it. They don't understand it. So they continue in the vanity of their minds. And in their understanding, it is, it is darkened. And it is full of evil. Amen. And separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their heart. Because of ignorance and because of hardening of heart. You are a believer. I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ which says that come out of sin. But you say, oh, by grace you have been saved. You are hardening your heart. I'm telling you. You are hardening of your heart. Amen. And those who those who live such life they are separated from the life of god so you can be a christian a titled christian a church going christian but when you don't obey the word of god you are separated from the life of god that is the truth let us face the truth my brothers and sisters sin is bad sin is disgraceful sin is shameful sin is wicked sin is depriving Sin takes a person to hell and therefore change your mind from sin. Come out of sin and do a spiritual warfare and you'll be successful. Hallelujah. Let me read a popular verse to you. John 5 verse 15. John 5 verse 15. Amen. Let's look at how sin can make a person uh, very, 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 very sick. John 5. John 5 is the the story of the lame man who was lame for 38 years he was lame for 38 years but what make this man lame we won't find it there but you find it in the verse 14 amen so after jesus christ has healed this lame man yeah on the sabbath day he met him again in the verse 14 later jesus found him at the temple and said to him see you are well again. That is why you come to Jesus Christ. He forgives you your sin. Everything is okay. Amen. You are well again. Then he continued. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. Or something worse, more 
may happen to you. Hallelujah. So have you seen a sin has crimped Crippled and made this man lame for 38 good years. He has suffered because of sin. So sin is wicked. Sin is disgraceful. He has been in that condition for 38 good years because of sin. Now, the Savior, the gracious everlasting King in the flesh, Jesus, saved him from that condition and told him, Make sure you don't commit the same sin again or else. Something more than 38 years will happen to you. In fact, you will go back to his former state and more wickedness will be added onto, onto his life. So, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, very, very, very important that you don't continue to sin the sin you used to do before you were saved. Come out of sin. Come out of sin. Praise the Lord. It is not by your strength. Only surrender unto the Lord Jesus Christ and he will help you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, it is very, very important, my brothers and sisters, that before you do any spiritual warfare, make sure you don't stay in sin. You are want to, if something is worrying you, you are facing that life is not going on well, you want to engage in spirituality to pray for a breakthrough, and you are living in sin, please don't try it. The prayers want will not be answered. Secondly, demons are going to attack you the more. Amen. Because you are trying to cast them out from your life. Where should they go? Uh -huh. So they will make sure that you live in that sin. So in order to do a good spiritual warfare, a victorious spiritual warfare, come out of known sins. Amen. Uh -huh. So get out of sin. Get out of your, out of sin. Get sin out of your life. Amen. Sin is like a heavy back loaded with hot stones, a heavy burden on you. Anytime you are going on in life, the sin, the burden of sin is pulling you down. With that burden of sin, you cannot run any race and win in life. No, sin will always draw you back, will always make you uh, a slave. Amen? So, sin and bondage a person. Sin enslaves a person. And in life, you can see that everybody will be going ahead of you and you are still remaining where you are because of sin. Amen. Therefore, get out of sin, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Living in sin and doing spiritual warfare is like staring a bee's nest. You know, bees, when you want to go and get some honey, you must drive away the bees before you get the honey. Amen. Uh -huh. You won't break through in life. You must drive away the hurt, the ill sicknesses. You must drive away sin before you can see that breakthrough. So to do spiritual warfare and living in sin, you are staring hot, a beast net. You are going to a fight that you will never win. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, get out of sin. Crucify the desires of the flesh. Crucify it. Take. The body is desiring to do this. You will say, in the name of Jesus, I deny you. Amen? When the thought of fornication comes into your mind, you say, by the blood of Jesus, I erase this evil thought. You understand? So all the time, you are casting out, you are denying, you are nullifying the thought of evil in your mind before they becoming a fruit or they before they germinate. So all the time you have to be on guard as a believer because we are on warfare. The thoughts that are coming to your mind, they are spirit. They are spiritual. And therefore, you are all the time on guard. Guard your minds. Guide your lips into all righteousness. Hallelujah. Therefore, the solution is pick up your cross and surrender it to Jesus. Whatever has become a burden for you, any addiction, Sin addition that you are into. You cannot come out from it by your strength. This is the time to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I surrender unto you all my sins and burdens of sin on me. I surrender it unto you, unto the cross. Now, I nail it to the cross and now let your blood wash me. Let your blood wash me and let your Holy Spirit empower me to come out of sin. Amen? This is what you have to do, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, in order to come out. Because the Lord has helped us, and therefore the Lord will help you also. Amen? If you quit, you can never win. 
And if you want to win, you must continue in spiritual battle. Amen? Because quitters never win and winners never quit. That is the principle we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. For the joy set before him, he carries the cross. He endured the shame. It's cunning. It's deprivacy. Amen? And at the end, he was a victor. And therefore, for that same joy set before us, let us overcome every known sins in our life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I've brought this session to an end. I want us to pray because it's very, very important in the Lord that once in a while we'll make a conscious examination of ourselves, rededicate our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are refreshed spiritually and physically. Amen. So right now, I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, you are my King and my Savior. I am a sinner. Forgive me all my sins, my intentional sins, all that I call weakness. Jesus, forgive me all my sins in your precious eternal holy blood. In your precious eternal holy blood, forgive me all my sins. Make me new by your grace power. Make me new by your grace power. And let your Holy Spirit empower me to come out of every habitual sin and every addictions of sins. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, I bring your people all over the world. I bring the citizens in the king in your kingdom into your hands, O oh Lord. And I stand in your covenant blood right now. And I immerse them, I saturate them into your eternal holy blood. The blood that cleanses all our sins. Therefore, my Lord, my God, I pray that each and every one that is suffering sin, burden of sin, habitual sins, sins of the flesh, sins of the eyes, my Lord, my God, let your blood wash them. Let your eternal holy blood wash them. Jesus, let your eternal holy blood wash fornication spirit. Let your eternal holy blood wash masturbation spirit. Let your eternal holy blood wash jealousy. Let your eternal holy blood wash away every wickedness which is seen in our heart, in the heart of your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, my Lord, my God, I pray that your Holy Spirit power will come upon them, energize them, give them self-control, self-discipline, spirit of might and spirit of love, to love you, Jesus, and to be faithful unto you. Jesus, I release your Holy Spirit. I release your Holy Spirit to, to your people wherever they are, into their heart right now. May they feel the impact of the Holy Spirit right now. May they receive the power of the Holy Spirit right now to stand firm and be victorious and be self-control and be willing to come out of known sins. We give you praise. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you all of our social media uh, for team in the Lord continue to bless you. Tomorrow by God's grace we we'll meet again. Have a wonderful and a blessed Saturday. Shalom.